In this tutorial, we're going to go through how to use GDB at the command line. We're going to start a terminal window, which we've made to be have a very large font, using the profile preferences in the options menu of the edit tab. I'm going to be a 16 point font just so you can read everything. We're going to go to the desktop and we're going to compile our program fib.c using the command line with the dash g flag so it has debug symbols in it which is needed for debugging. This is the contents of the fib program. We use less to look at it. It's a pretty standard Fibonacci program. Two subroutines, fib and main. We're going to be using the fact that there's two subroutines to set breakpoints at different points. We do GDB fib to start, and then we use run to run the program. From here, it runs just like it would normally at the shell. We ask, it asks for input, we give it, it runs. We can do that as much as we want. Now we can set a breakpoint for main. That information indicates where the breakpoint actually was set. Now when we run, we stop at the first executable statement in main, which is the put s. We can use the next statement to get to the next line. We can also use shorthand, like n, to get to the next line, where we had to then wait for input. We can use p, which stands for print, to print out variables like result or i. We usually use the shorthand, like n, to continue stepping through a program. We usually don't use the long commands, although I'll try and do so in most of the examples here. So we're going to run that again after the program is exited. And we'll notice that when we don't have line number information, we don't get to go to the next line. So we're going to execute the scanf that asks for input. So we put in the number 3. We see the result of being assigned as a function of fib. The result has a meaningless value right now because it hasn't been set to anything. The display function will cause the value of result to be printed at every line within the procedure we're in. We're in procedure main in file fib.c at line 21. The where function will, or command will tell us that. We're now going to step into the fib function. That means we're actually calling the fib function. If we do where inside of there, we'll see that fib was called from main at line 21. We can print local variables within that function or display them. They'll only be displayed when we're in that function. Now we can step over the, that execution of fib and of the next, and then perform the computation that's in the return. So ideally, this should return the value um, 3, I think. Now we execute the printf, and it says there's the value 3. And now we finish that program and it's going to continue execution. So we just say continue. We run it again. We see that the display uh, variables, like result, are still there. Because we haven't exited GDB, it's going to continue keeping those display variables and redisplaying them. In this case, we're doing basically the same thing, except now we're stepping into the function again. You'll notice that we're in fib, which was called by fib, which was called by main. We can print the ver local variables of that instance of the procedure as well. We, again, we can print any of the local variables by name. We can also use expressions like print x plus y if we want to know what it would return. We can finish this procedure by typing finish. So in the first where we saw that we were in fib called by fib called by main, now we're in just fib called by main. We return, and the return value is 2. Again, we can perform the computations. The value of n that's being printed is the value that's from the current instance of fib. We can also refer to the variables using the dollar variables. So previous values, older values, can be referred to as dollar values. So dollar twelve or dollar one, and dollar dollar means the value of the previous um, printed thing. So sometimes that's useful when you have a pointer and you want to use it to follow a pointer to have a value that you don't want to have to write down in the number. 
the um, dollar values what you refer to previous values in expressions. So we go to the next statement. We're just stepping through execution. Now we're done. So we say continue because there's no further stepping that we can do at this point. The program exits normally. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we compile with different options. In this case, we're going to compile with the optimizer flag on and with the dash G flag for debugging symbols. It's not going to happen in this example, but in a lot of your programs, you're going to notice that if the optimizer is on, certain variables are not available anymore. And the reason we're going to compile it again, just to make certain, the reason that those variables are not available anymore is that they've been optimized away. We'll understand what this means later in the class. In our particular case here, the optimizer hasn't gotten rid of any statements that were not unnecessary. So if we set a breakpoint at main, and then set a breakpoint at fib, and then run the program, that puts us in the main, we can say C for continue, and then enter in our input, and it stops in fib, because we'd set a second breakpoint there. We can disable, and also enable, breakpoints. I disabled that one there because I didn't want to have it every time that we called fib that we were going to take a break point and come back to the command line. So in that particular case, I used the setting the breakpoint at fib just to be able to get to the start of the fib routine without having to do lots of nexts or steps. If we compile without the dash g flag, you're going to see something else more complicated happen. This program, so we set a breakpoint at main and fib, this program has no information about the C program. It's just a bunch of assembly language instructions. You'll see down at the bottom it says current language auto, currently ASM. What that means is that if we set a breakpoint for main and a breakpoint for fib, we don't actually get to see what the statements are. We do get to set the breakpoints, and we can still look at some information in memory, but we really don't have a lot of information. We can see what procedures we're in, but not a lot unless we know more about the assembly language of the machine that we're using. That's going to be a later tutorial.